On my last day before the vacation, I, um, I was in Istanbul and uh, just we were getting ready to pack our bags and um, at just around 9 p.m. my aunt runs up into the living room and starts yelling, oh my god, there's a coup. Now, okay, at first I thought this was just some classic family exaggeration, but as I turned on the TV, I realized that both the bridges, both Bosphorus bridges that connect Asia to Europe and Europe to Asia, are being blocked by the military. So at this point, I didn't really understand if it was real or not. It was, at, it was just news reports. Uh, so at, at around 10 p.m., uh, the, the main government news channel was handed a piece of paper by the supposed coup plotters. And basically, this document was signed by something called the Yurtasul Council. And this was ironically named the Council of Peace in the Country. And uh, this document essentially said that the government was officially under military control. And at this exact moment, the pro-coup uh, F-16 fighters started flying low over homes. Uh, and the email, email and internet was shut down across the country. So uh, this went around for around an hour, about an hour of minimal conflict. Nothing was really going on. And then at uh, 11, CNN receives a call from the president through FaceTime. And the president starts talking to the citizens of Turkey through FaceTime. So he starts to tell people that there's nothing to worry about and that the country is still under his control. Now, of course, this is all natural coming from a uh, president point of view. But then he starts telling citizens to take to the streets and fight back against the military. Now, um, this, this is, at this point, the coup really took full swing. Um, the, the, the risk of a civil war going on was actually mounting like insane. And um, the jet fighters started flying much lower and dropping sound bombs on nearby neighborhoods. And because, obviously, the, uh, military, the citizens and the police were fighting together against the military because the police was still under government control, military was forced to shoot back and the death toll in the country was increasing. And this, this, caused, this just caused more panic amongst the people. So, um, that night was most definitely the worst of my life. Uh, I was up until 4 a.m. and the constant sound of the jets were keeping me awake. There was not much I could do to go to sleep. Uh, at around 4 a.m. I did manage to get some sleep because the, the, jets, the jet fighter uh, sound bombs were getting much less frequent. Uh, but the next day wasn't really much better. So, first of all, the neighborhood I was in, uh, which was actually clo very close to the military base, uh, was a complete ghost town, except for people doing their regular jobs. And weirdly enough, no one was really talking about what had happened last night. The military had taken control of the government, and everyone was acting like it was just some normal day. Uh, but obviously with this, the story was much, much more different downtown. In, uh, in downtown, where right near the bridges, the, no one was really sure if the coup had failed or had succeeded. Uh, there, no one knew if the government was back under regular control, even with the regular updates from the news stations. So no one, was really, no one really knew who to trust at the time. And um, every soldier was seen as an enemy of the state. And this just ended up into more lawlessness and chaos. Luckily, I managed to make it back home the day after through the main airport in Istanbul, which was still under control of the government. And just a quick summary of that, there was only one real main thing that was on my mind. And this was a threat to my life and a threat to my family's safety, right? There wasn't, there wasn't too much behind what I was going at. So after I came back home to Canada, I thought, okay, I'm safe, the coup is over, Turkey is safe. Well, I later found out that the coup was far from over, although it had technically ended. Uh, the Turkish government declared a, something called a state of emergency, and this let them pass any laws that they wanted. So this gave them total control over the country. And by doing this, they arrested thousands of deans, academic leaders, and teachers. They were arrested and they were fired. Over three million civil servants were banned from leaving the country. And at this point, the government started blaming any group that they could to make, to make it seem like it was a much more organized uh, operation. Most infamously known, the Fethullah Gülen group, or movement, is a Muslim religious uh, movement that was based in Turkey. And any opposition party, or any party member from the, non, uh, the party that wasn't in power at the time, was arrested. 
and um, a lot of popular leftist news outlets were uh, were taken their ha had their broadcasting rights taken away. Um, and also, much more recently, I don't know if you've heard, but Kurdish members of the Kurdish uh, Democratic People's Party, all of them were just arrested. So there's basically no more um, no more like uh, opposition against the main party in Turkey. And of course, with all this. Uh, with the law, with the rule of law, logic and order being thrown out the window, this led to also talk, also led to talks of the death penalty being reinstated back into Turkey. So, at this point, I really realized that, that my time spent in Turkey and pretty much after the coup, uh, all my basic rights as a human citizen were suspended. My freedoms that I had taken for granted, which had been there for my entire life, were gone. My freedom of speech, movement, assembly, and access to information became null and void. And this wasn't only from the military, but this was also from the government, which wasn't really something that the people had expected, because the, the military was seen as the enemy at the time, but the, but the government was the one who were taking away our rights. So this was a true feeling of a military coup. Uh, it was the end of democracy as I had known it, the eradication of human rights, rights and just law, human dignity was thrown out the window and the beginning of total arbitrary power in Turkey was reinstated. So, how does this really affect you and all of us as Canadian citizens? So, this really goes to show how fragile our human rights and freedoms are, how quickly they can be tampered with or taken away. This summer coup really reminded that it's important for us to stay vigilant in protecting our rights and our freedoms. We must learn to be more appreciative of the of the rights and responsibilities that we already have and are given as citizens. And the most important thing in life, perhaps, is to protect our democratic institutions and the values that, we, that are embedded to, as, to us in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. These rights and freedoms are what define us as equal individuals. It, what, it make, it's what makes me not any different from any of you in the audience right now today. So, my last message to you is, as we live every day appreciating this precious heritage of ours, wherever you come from, it, it is ours, and it is our rights and freedoms as human beings. We must not be complacent about it, and we must learn to appreciate every day 